Welcome back. In this video we're going to go over my new to me 1985 Toyota MR2. If you've been watching the recent videos on the shed, you'll see the car that's in this spot has changed. Um, unfortunately, I sold the Corolla G6. Um, thankfully, it went to a, a guy who's very, very much in love with Toyotas and really appreciates what's special about that G6, so don't worry. It'll get looked after. It'll probably get looked after better than I would have. But the upside of selling the Corolla is that I was able to go out and buy this. It popped up on Facebook Marketplace and it looked re like really clean and the price wasn't too bad. It was probably a lot less than it should have been, but we, well, I sent it to my dad at a thing six in the morning and I think he just replied with if there's no rust let's get it um, and I think we managed to get in contact with the people selling it and we were able to literally buy it the same day um, we sent them a deposit over the phone and said look as long as the car is in reasonable condition when we see it we'll take it went up the next morning had a good look around the car and the car's not perfect it's been off the road a number of years but it's so original and so clean we just had to take it we tried to get that started on the day but no joy and um, I saw it was cranking okay with a new battery but I saw the king lead for the HT lead was shortened But we said, that'll be fine. The car looks in such good condition, like the oil and everything looks so clean that I was like, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll start. At some point, it just needs a bit of help. It at least needs HT leads. Next day, I got, um, I organized some transport and I went up before the truck arrived and I just threw some duct tape on the King lead and it started right up and drove itself out and up onto the yeah, and up to the back of the trailer and then we winched it up. So yeah, that's the story of how it got here. I'll go more into more detail into it in a minute. But just for anyone who's not familiar with these cars, I'm not sure how you're not familiar if you've made it to this YouTube channel. I would have thought you'd know what it is, so I'll keep it brief. It was Toyota's first foray into a mid-engine car. So it's got a 1.6 twin cam 4A GE engine dropped in the back of the car, right behind the rear seats. First time they've done it in the early 80s, you can tell the styling of it is very of its time. There's barely a single curve on the car. It's 4A GE twin cam that you would have seen in the Corolla GTIs and the A86s of the same era. It's literally the same suspension layout and everything as the Corolla. They literally just lifted it out of the front and dropped it in the back and didn't do much else. But as far as modern cars go, they're really small. Think MX-5, me at a sort of size. Um, and they're, they're actually quite similar to the first gen MX-5 just in terms of like their weight and power and all that just obviously this has the engine in the back they were sort of known in the day as the poor man's Ferrari because you've got a high rev and naturally aspirated engine in the back of a two-seat uh, sports car and you could have it with a hardtop t-top so you could open up the roof this one's a sunroof model and pop-up headlights and all as you can see there so it was really like a small Ferrari for a fraction of the price 
I know they were quite popular in the States. They're not, they weren't hugely popular here, mainly just because people here aren't as willing to spend, you know, that much money on what is essentially a toy um, to float about in. This is, as far as I know, an original Northern Irish car, but I want to dig a bit more into that. We can look into that in this video. Um, yeah, it's sat for a long time. It's going to need some work. I don't know what work it's going to need, but that's what I want to accomplish today. I want to go through the car, see what bits of history we can figure out, and figure out what does the car need to get back running. All I know at the minute is it needs HT leads and it probably needs brakes because it's been sat for so long. Overall, the car, like just on first impressions, the car looks really clean. So I don't think there's a huge amount that needs doing, but I'm sure there'll be things that we'll come across that it needs. I don't know a huge amount about the history of this car. As I said, as far as I can tell, it is an original Northern Irish car. Um, it's had, I think it's had seven owners, eight previous owners now, with I think maybe in the ninth, so it might be quite hard to track this car's history down. I think it's an original North Irish car. The previous owner was an elderly gentleman that owned it for I think about 10 years, so from, it says the last V5 was issued in 2012. So he's owned it, he owned it for about 12 years, uh, 10, 11 years. And unfortunately he's recently gone into care. So his wife decided, you know, try to get a bit of money back and sell the cars because he's not going to be using them again, which is obviously very unfortunate, but this was his pride and joy. I spoke to her quite a bit and she was saying that they would take this just on trips and the local car shows this did classic car runs for the Northwest 200 motorcycle race. Um, it was part of the, I think, Coleraine Classic Car Club and she said they did trips with it to Donegal and you know, we always looked after it. It was always stored in the garage and always kept clean anything it needed. It always got, like you can see, it's got like brand new tires on it. And on overall, you can see that level of care and attention that the car got just in the overall condition. The car's not perfect. The car's almost 40 years old, 1985. It'll be 40 in two years. But you can see it was well looked after and it's in remarkable condition for the year. If you don't know about these cars, they're horrible for rot. The cells, the arches, the pockets, they rot like crazy. It's the reason you can still pick them up for a thousand, two thousand pounds. It's because <laughs> if you're getting one at that price, it's completely rotten. And we're at the point now where concourse ones go for 20 and 30 grand. Obviously, this is nowhere near a concourse car but it's a brilliant example of a survivor. I don't know if it's been painted. I don't know if it's, I don't, as far as I know, it's not been maxed or anything like that, but I don't know if it's had previous work done for rust, but the car does look really, really clean. And because the car's so original and it was his pride and joy, and he's obviously now not doing quite so well. And the car, this, this car won't be modified on the channel and I probably won't sell it to anyone who will modify it. I want to keep this car as original as possible and touch as few things as I possibly can and just keep it going as a survivor car. I, there's problems all over the paintwork. Nothing major, it's all minor stuff, but, and I could restore it. Like I can see there's problems with the paint right there and up here. I could restore it, but it's only original once and I want to keep it that way but I also want to look after it the best I can and preserve the car in its current condition. All I think with this car is you know someone went into a showroom in 1985 and bought this brand new. I cannot imagine, like I was never alive in the 80s, I don't know what it was like but I can't imagine what it must have been like to drive this thing off the showroom because it's in such good original condition, I can get it back on the road and I can get a taste of what this car would have been like in the mid 80s. Um, 
you know, I could modify it, I could update it, I could modernize it and make it a better car, but it wouldn't be like it was when someone drove off the showroom in 1985 in this car. I, like, it's got the original cassette player and I want to put cassettes in and listen to them. They won't be perfect, the speakers probably are terrible and all, but I just want to enjoy the car for what it is, not what it could be. Like, uh, if, if you watch the Skid Factory, I know they did a 4AG 20 valve in the back of one of these, and I'm sure it's quick and it's really enjoyable to drive, and I'm sure it sounds great with the ITBs right behind your head. But I want to keep this so with myself and anyone who drives it can be like, wow, this is what this car was like in 1985 off the showroom floor, and just like that that feeling of just being transported back in time to what that must have been like and like you know i want to keep the stock suspension the stock wheels like look at the sidewall on that no modern car has that kind of sidewall on the tires and they probably don't have that squishy suspension but that's all part of the fun and i can't I'm, i can't wait to take it on a back road and just, you know, I'm not going to be driving it fast or anything. I know these have unpredictable handling, but just feeling the car roll in each corner. You're feeling the wee 1.6 twin cam revving up. Oh, I, I can't wait to see what it's like out in the road. But anyway, that's enough rambling from me. I want to, there's a few papers and all through the car and a few things under the bonnet. I want to just go through it all and just see if we can find anything out about the guy that owned this car and, you know, part of its life because the car seems to just have been left in the garage taken out on these runs and then it's been sold to me so i'm gonna go we'll jump inside the car first and we'll check the glove box and we'll check all under the seats and behind the seats and all and see what, what we can find out about this car's past okay so you're inside the car with me and again in here it's so clean the steering wheel and everything is just like it's almost like new that's 40 years old. We've got the original radio down here, climate controls, everything's just in such good condition. Like all lettering on these and the wee indicator stock and that's all perfect. Like the, the closer and closer I look at this car, which is normally with an old car like this, the closer you look, the worse it gets. The closer I look with this, the better it gets, to be honest. The old MOT slip from May 2017. Um, date of first reg in Northern Ireland so when it first came to Northern Ireland it was the 10th of September 1985 so that must have been literally the day it was sold um, so it was that I think that basically tells us if it's in date of first reg in NI 10th of September 1985 it must have been an original Northern Irish car I don't know what that is Looks like a bonnet emblem, but I have no idea of what of. If anyone knows what that is, let me know. Nothing really to do with the car. But in here is full glass cleaner wipes. Just cloth, like you can tell you looked after if there's just cleaning supplies on it. Um, looks like a bag of trim screws, which is always handy to have. I'll keep, keep those in the car more cloths. Ooh, an old tax disc. So you don't need the, oh no, it's a MOT disc. Don't need these anymore, but that was from August 2003. Let's see what else we've got. Stark Vehicle Club. Oh, Northwest 200 classic car run. Um, so it was April 2012. They did that from the Colrain Stark Vehicle Clubs. So that's just another thing that it did that Northwest 200 classic car run. God, 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, Northwest 200 Old Vehicle Club entry from 2012 with the Relentless Energy Drink sponsorship. <laughs> I don't think I've heard of Relentless Energy Drink in years. Like. I actually had a look around Facebook after the fact and I managed to find some old pictures of the car back 
when it was touring around and doing classic and vintage car shows. So it's pretty cool to see that the car's actually been around and been out there doing wee classic car runs and been just getting looked after and and pampered all this time. Like, all these pictures were taken from way, way, way before I even had my license, so just thought I'd drop that in there. So let's take a look at this. Oh, look at that. The original owner's manual. With the wee line art and all on it. What else have we got in here? Got the six year anti corrosion warranty book. I'm sure that, that didn't hold up for much more than six years if it did at all. Um, oh, unfortunately, there's no name of the original owner in there. It'd be nice to find the original owner and contact them. Then it says service due every 6,000 miles or every six months. Oh, here we go PDI, which would be the pre purchase inspection. So it was Shell Burn Motors and poured it down, is where the car came from. And then it got a service at 600 miles, again, Shelburne Motors. So in 1993, the 24th of May, it was at 59,769 miles. So it's at 95 now, so it's only done 35,000 miles in the past 30 years. No, have I done that wrong? Yeah, 30 years. Jesus, so 30 years it's done, it's basically done a thousand miles a year since 1993 and then it must have been sold at that age and just the next person didn't keep up with the service records. I could continue it on. So that's what we found in sort of the glove compartments, I don't think there's any more cubby holes in the cars. That wheel has never seen the road. You see the tread there. It's like, yeah, nothing touched. What I wanted to really look at, I've cleared everything out from under that spare wheel, but I just want to get a look at the floor there. And I've got to see it, like, perfect. There's bits of crust and all, but, like, there's no real rot in under there. It's all still painted and all still looks lovely. I didn't notice that. You hear that? There's like a wee canister or something under the toolkit here. I'm going to see if I can release that. There's Toyota made in Japan. Let's see what we've got. God, it's literally got everything. It's got the wheel chuck, the original brace, a few spanners, screwdriver. Oh, that's right. a bit dirty, but it's not bad. Oh god. This is very old. Yeah. Universal braking clutch fluid, Castrol. Thankfully I think there's actually still fluid in it, but I think the tank's held. You know, braking clutch fluid is horrible for metal, which is why that is in such bad condition, but it looks like it's just held together long enough. I think that's everything that's in here, so we found a few tools, found all the original bits, and we haven't found any horrible signs of rust. I just sort of peel this back a little bit. I can see here there's a wee bit starting here. It looks like it's coming down from the wee rain gutters, like it's just trapped water. Oh yeah. Oh, it's actually quite bad. You can see that's not great. But we're gonna take care of it. Obviously, just water dripping in there, and then just sits behind there. See, I'm seeing this very red paint here. So I wonder if it did have some problems behind the arches, because that doesn't look original. You're always gonna see some problems like that. As long as we don't find anything too serious, we'll be fine. And as I say, it's always better to look at these things and take care of it now before it becomes a really serious problem. Now that we'd had a good poke around the car and gotten a gauge of what it was like, I decided to jack it up 
take the wheels off, give it a good clean top and bottom, just to see what are we really dealing with, is there any nasty surprises? And I'm really glad to report, from what I could tell, I couldn't find any major issues with the car. Few wee spots of surface rust, but nothing major at all. It's definitely been patched before in a couple of wee small places on the sill and on the inner arch, but other than that, it's in remarkable condition for the age. As you can see here, we can even still see the original paint underneath, so I'm not sure if I want to underseal all over that or just, say, fluid film it and try and keep the car safe and away from the salt. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed getting a look around this particular Toyota MR2. I'm really pleased with that and just cannot wait to get it out in the roads this summer and see what it's really like. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.